What's up everybody? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, manifest, plan and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all is surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you guys. If I'm new to you, if you're new to me, before you leave, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? And speaking of coming and learn, you guys, I'm an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, content creator, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter, baby. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys. So um, as you guys see with the backdrop here, I'm doing things a little different here in Difference World. We're switching it up. Up, trying things in a little new my uh, therapist had to do a little exposure therapy and getting out of my comfort zone and so with that comes along with you know building my brand and uh, content creating for you guys with my YouTube channel and so with that I'm branching out doing my reaction videos my first reaction video got me one of my biggest views today uh, got like around 500 to 600 views so far with the Cat Williams interview he did with Shannon Sharp man he broke the internet with that you guys and so with this one we following up he did another interview with uh my boy willie d with the ghetto boys i hear from my hometown uh fifth ward shout out to him uh and scarface and rest in peace to Bush bushwick bill but um cat williams went on um willie d live podcast and talked with him following up the shannon sharp interview and he had a lot to say and now he got the whole internet shook and everybody on edge everybody responding from you know steve harvey to you know said the entertainer uh who else uh ricky smiley tiffany haddish everybody's responding even Ludacris and wrote a rap <laughs> man but uh so we're going to be doing, I haven't seen this interview yet, and so I have I've just finally got some time. It's the weekend. I've been working. I uh, got a utility schedule, you guys, Monday through Fridays, 8 to 5. Mama got bills to pay, so hey, until my YouTube channel takes off and I got a million subscribers, I'm going to still be working and be clocking in them hours. And so with that, got some time today, so we're going to sit back, we're going to watch this review, uh, watch this interview, and this will be my reaction. Again, I haven't seen it yet, and so um, I don't know what took place and what they talked about i made sure to avoid you know social media and uh all the little you know uh, what's how you call it the little videos that we make clips of it from so i've been making sure to avoid it because i, I just want this this is my uh first sit down watching the interview going through us just under a little over an hour thank god <laughs> the, the interview with, uh, he did with uh shannon was damn near three hours y'all and i couldn't believe i sat through it but i did so we're going to do it again with this one. It'll be a little quicker. So uh, with that, guys, check out my reaction. And then as well as, you know, drop your reactions in your comments as well. Don't forget, hit that like, share, comment, and subscribe button. And uh, without further ado, we're going to bust this thing on open. Let me hit the play button. And here it is, y'all. Let's check it out. Difference world, y'all. Come and learn. Let's get it. Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all. Back D, with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. In the studio, Cat Williams. <sighs> What's up, Thank King? Thank you. How are you, sir? Oh, man, one more hop, I'll be on top. How about Prepare you? for your hop. Doing yeah. great. <laughs> doing great. Yeah, you're doing great, man. Um, Cleveland, Ohio. Dayton, is that, Ohio. Is that, is, Cincinnati, but, but, but Ohio. You, I mean, see, right, my, my bad. Right. You were born in Cincinnati. Yep. And then you Cincinnati. were raised in Dayton. And raised in Dayton. Correct. Man, yeah. you, you know, we had a a show in Dayton once, and it almost, like, no boys? provoked a full-blown oh, riot. Them. You know, you know, in Dayton, these they had these cops with these big old 10-gallon hats. They did. That's Texas Big old thing. white cornbread-fed dudes. And, mm -hmm. cornbread and they were telling us, you y'all gonna either pay for all of this equipment that y'all destroyed on the stage. We destroyed, well, allegedly, we destroyed <laughs> well, you uh, said it already. equipment, band equipment that yeah. belonged to uh, After 7 and Troop. Oh, my. We were on the same Got ticket it. Yeah, yeah. as After 7 and Troop. We yeah. destroyed them, their uh, equipment. Allegedly. Allegedly, well, yeah, yeah. Well, and he already admitted, they so told us, y'all going to pay for this stuff, or y'all going to jail. Mm -hmm. And so we basically just did the show for free because we gave all that money back. But Dayton is, was, that that's, will forever be like in, embedded in my memory 
Dayton, Ohio, for that reason. But I'm sorry what, what that you had you a remember? bad memory. But what do you? I mean, what is what are some good memories that you have from well, from, from Dayton? Part of what you remember is a part of Dayton. So Dayton was one of the rare cities in America that was legitimately half black and half white. So uh, really, a mulatto city. Wow. There was power on both ends. I I, I came from a very powerful um, family in Dayton just because of our sheer numbers. So there were um, 13 on my father's side and seven on my mother's side. So we had I had like 100 first cousins in one city. Wow. Like we just had a large uh, family and it was a great place for black people and it was a great place for white people um you know, it's he just got that the same you really couldn't be with legitimately Shannon, racist you know, with because Shannon, your he has neighbors to get off his chest and, you were know, of this another one, color i don't know i'm hoping so, what's the power yeah, dynamic of more, mostly white people Shannon, running it, i don't like, know y'all well that's um, the dynamic of america at <clears throat> that particular you know, time um, naturally funny so he'll entertain well, one of my uncles was the chief of police another was the head pastor in town and, you know had some cocaine dealing <laughs> uncles as well so we were really rooted in the city but it was a city of money so we had cooper tires we had dayton tires we had ibm we had ncr we had right Patterson Air Force Base. We had University of Dayton. These are all places where you can make six figures even at that time. So it was a lot of money there. As far and as on the radio, we would hear every hour five or six artists that were from where we were from. So we thought that was a part of it. We hear in the Ohio players and Roger Troutman and Zap Studio is our bus stop when we're seven hmm. years old like so um i met prince while i was in dayton when i'm 12 like it was a, a very vibrant community for black people so you it saw was? a lot of the the street stuff how did you end up um, first of all did you end up doing any of the street stuff get participating in any of that street activity you mentioned your uncles selling drugs and all of that um well, I leave. I think I, leave I got my expectations Dayton, up a little too high, you right guys. I don't know why so I was expecting I'm still that. You know, at um, a young age, I'm just right into having the ribbon. <laughs> heightened experiences. <laughs> uh, and then responding to the backlashes of, of, of those responding to him, but I see that so, um, he's moved on from it. Like I, I don't appreciate that, but mm. like I've always <laughs> had money. I'm like everybody but else. I don't come from money so I, I was able to cut grass in the summer and I was able to shovel snow in the winter that's what I was allowed to do so but consequently even as a kid I'm making like six seven thousand dollars a year and this is at 12 years old before that at 10 at 10 just um just because that's what I was allowed to do. And I'm a I'm a hustler by nature. Like if I Me get too. a hold of a lick, I want to see how many times it flips, not if it flips. You know what I mean? So um, mm -hmm. once I'm gone from there, I'm trying my hand at other things door to door. And I had already made a million dollars before I was 18 doing door to door across the country. So I, I had already tested out what were the positive things about me and um, how I could use that to my advantage economically um, from an is, early age. Is it true that you emancipated yourself from your parents at 13? Because I read that somewhere. <clears throat> well, I think it the, was Wikipedia said something like that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't shame the family. What I would say is that um, it can't be called run away because I didn't run away. Um, I, I left, but um, mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't tell that part of the story just because there's 
a zero chance that if a young person listens to me and follows my example on that, that they'll be okay. But um, I knew I would be, but you know, yeah, I was a little off. Home like I knew to. Jesus left home at 13. So I didn't feel like I was out of pocket in any way. Wait a minute. Are you saying that at 13 years old, you was cognizant of the story of Jesus leaving home at 13 years old? I had been accepted to college before I was twelve, so I was. Now he did okay. More okay. Let's let's pause this, y'all. Um, um, he said that he got accepted into college. I think it was what Delaware University or Darby University uh, that he was accepted by the age of seven. Now I'm not saying I don't believe him because it's possible. There's a lot of smart little young whippersnappers out there that that's doing things younger than him. That at the age that he said he got accepted. Allegedly. Now, I say allegedly because, you know, the receipts ain't dropped yet. And they saying, you know, Cat, you know, he might tell a joke, but he'll never tell a lie. And I'm not saying it's not a lie, but I'm just going to wait for the receipts to pop up. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. Back answer. Your, your average child. I, I had probably read 10,000 books at that period. And there you go with the 10,000 books. Life. Um, and I, I believe so that I, over I was time, but not no damn In that way. Year, but um, like as you like know, like you can't like really just live on like that. So um, God navigated where I was able to see the um, underworld, if you will. So I, I go from my parents' house in Ohio to Miami, Florida, by myself, I don't know nobody, and that's where the story begins. But in your formidable years, who is that person? Was there a single individual who inspired you, or some guy, or a person that you looked up to, and you said, you know, I like the way that they move, and I want to model myself after that? Now. I'll cat, I have a question about this. Now, I'm not saying that this isn't true that, you know, Cat didn't leave home at 12, but if that's the case, then uh, was it so bad that his parents couldn't get him to come back home or they tried to stop him? Or why, did, why would they allow a 13-year-old to go all the way to Miami of all places? <laughs> now, I take it this is, what, around the 70s, the 80s, but what? I was Cat around, like, 53, 54 now, 52. And so, yeah, this had to be, like, around, what, the seven, uh, 80s, early 90s that they allowed this young man to go to Miami at 13. I found that, you know, very, I don't want to say just, I don't want to judge, you know, because hey, look at me, I'm 11 years old out on the street. I was younger than him, but I'm saying my parents didn't allow me to do that. That life happened. And so I'm not saying his parents allowed him either, but why didn't they stop him or bring his ass back home? That's <laughs> my question. That'd be my kid. I'd be like, bring your ass back home. You ain't grown yet. But, uh, okay, we'll see. Teach his own. That person. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a weird answer. Um, yes, that's one of the things that I was probably the best at. I did it with anybody and everybody. So I, when I was going to the library, uh, I wasn't I reading um, fiction books. I was reading nonfiction books, and it didn't matter what it was. I'm yeah, just. The library has been my safe I know haven. whatever's I in this book, I don't know what it to, is. So I, believe that. so I might have read like a thousand autobiographies, just the life of people that I don't know. And um, when you do that, you find out that if you were trying to learn something from everybody, you could actually learn something from every single person mm -hmm. that you met. Yeah. And so um, it's that type of um, thinking that helped me avoid the pitfalls as I saw them. So the reason I never did drugs when I was an adult is because when I left and went to Miami and I'm living in a park, it's 30 people out there from all different places and they all are homeless and in a terrible situation just like me and they telling me that they used to be lawyers and doctors and nurses and mm -hmm. I'm going well, well what happened and all of them is telling this story where everything in their life was fine and then they dealt with this drug and this is where it ended them out. Mm 
So as a kid, I never saw the fun part of drugs. I never heard about nobody having a good time on drugs or, oh, you got to take this so you can feel it. I, I didn't, I didn't see it from that way. I had already seen what it would do to people. And they're telling me, like, I'm letting people tell me, hey, don't, don't do this. Don't, don't get to Hollywood and start sleeping with white women and doing cocaine because <laughs> it'll kill you. Oh, huh, yeah, no problem. Got it. So, you know, and a lot of things I was just stupid enough to get the lessons, but that came from being willing to learn something from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. How long were you out on the streets? <clears throat> well, it sounds so harsh when you say on the streets. Yeah, uh, just understand that I'm in a I'm in slacks and a shirt and a tie every day and I'm eating at a five-star restaurant because I don't work this deal with the restaurant where I come in at five in the morning and I come and do the floors and clean up everything the bus people didn't do, knock out the old dishes. I do all of that, but I get to eat there for free. So I come later and have a five-star lunch as a 12-year-old, because I'm already smoking cigarettes, but I, I got a mustache, so I, I don't look out of place. And then I go and I do my eight hours in the library to take the place of what schooling would have been. So mm -hmm. um, two hours were spent collecting radios from people's cars at the marina, which funded me to um, at least have <laughs> seven or eight hundred dollars a week in my pocket, so that was my the situation for, I'll that. say, 12 months. Mm. Was there somebody who came along, a social worker or something like that, and, and yeah, saw I'm you and said, yo, I talk to you, and like, yo, you I can know this, uh, or you should do this, or uh, that? <clears throat> no. Um, you, you're looking at it a different way than I was looking at it. I wasn't in a pitiable situation by any means. Right. Um, you wanted to. I time was to free. Home. And um, it was an adventure that I was on. Adventure? And I had to already read all of these books. I know how this goes. I know that a terribly scary adventure is nothing for the warrior. He doesn't need to be in a good position. There is a God, and he's going to see you through. Mm -hmm. You just have to make sure that you're hitting the marks to qualify for the blessing. Um, so I, I, I was never in a situation where someone would think that I needed some assistance. Where were you sleeping at? In the part that I told you, you about, across the street from the library in Coconut Grove. Like on the ground, on the bench? No, they had a mattress out there. I yeah. had money, so people would get you stuff. Why didn't you just take your money and go get a crib? Well, at 13? 13. <laughs> it never crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never crossed my mind. Because I, I really do. I know it's young, but I do know people who, who are very young. If, like if somebody is young enough to get out on the, go out on the streets and just say, I'm, I'm leaving home, yeah. a lot of times, uh, and, and if they got money, they're savvy enough to it's not get that I have to money. pay them. I'm making some money. I don't have money. I'm making some money. Enough to get by. Well, I'm saying I don't have a long list of needs on the daily. I need to eat well. I need to drink well. And where are you keeping your money? Like in your pocket? I am. Yeah. I am. Anybody ever try to rob you? <laughs> um... Like, no, I I did have somebody try to violate me while I was out there. Um, I think because I didn't know really what gay people were, so I wasn't really clear. I knew how gay people acted, as I had seen, but I d wasn't aware that it had a sexual connotation to it. Mm -hmm. So um, as soon as the guy kept talking to me like he liked me, I was really confused because 
guys don't like guys. And I'm trying to figure out, is there something about your background that makes you talk like a lady while you're talking to me? <laughs> but yeah, I had that as a situation. Um, but other than that, no, I I wasn't frequently tried um, as a young person. Yeah. He probably so, not saying um, that. He, he probably was riding on the stage track. Because I'm really trying so, to figure out. I could like, tell how you how this into, it was kind of like that like, for me coming like, up in the streets. You're a very insightful dude. Right. Just trying to figure out, like, like where did that start at? Can you pinpoint a specific time and space where you said, you know, yeah, um, I get it. I see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> probably like five years old. Hmm. Um, First and foremost, this is going to sound really, really weird, but um, I believed at that young age that you could have a relationship with God. And I know that that's kind of old fashioned now. Yeah, um, I, I don't dismiss that. But you know, when I was young, right now, as that's what I believed. And, and so I developed yeah. this relationship where we talk four or five times a day and we talk about everything and I'm coming to you when things are well and when it's not well. And if I ask for something, I know when you gave me what I asked for because it's the only time. So I understood at a young age that I wasn't like everybody else, that I was in a blessed position and that I had the ability to be able to make things happen if I could find the instructions and follow them. So um, at five years old, that's how I thought. I knew when things were wrong with the Bible. I wasn't worried about authority because God was like the authority. And other than that, I got to tolerate you, but I, I, I'm not allowed to bow down. I'm like that as, as a child. So my parents didn't do anything wrong. They just wanted me to live a life that I wasn't going to live. They wanted me to be this, and I was not free to live a double life. I can't be that and be what I'm trying to be. What was that they wanted you to be? Um, I think you said a part of their religion. Yeah, Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. They were uh, very devout Christian? in religion. Christian. <clears throat> yes, a, a, a branch of Christianity, yes. At one point, did you become a Muslim? At one point, I became um, several religions because that's the only way you can really find out what's going on in a religion. Um, <laughs> religion is not something that you can just study the books sense. about it and now you know about them. Uh. Um, I had to be a member of the Fruit of Islam in order to know. Um, Minister Farrakhan calls me his son. I, I, I was not um, regular even in uh, that endeavor just because whoever the true God is, I don't play about him. And I understand that regardless of what you choose to call him, it's the same entity. And um, once you study all of the religions, you find out that Nobody's me, really disagreeing with anybody. I just say you have to take religion out of it in order to gain that relationship. The God. Jews don't believe this whole that set of be. things that but Christians don't. What works for some may not work for others. Muslims either. So with that Why being said, I'm not going to jump into every religion to try it out to see what works for me. No. i got to remove that. That's a lot of God's feeling. Well. Take a puff, puff. If you had the ability to control the black people on this planet, there isn't anything that you couldn't take, dismantle, destroy, or interrupt hmm. if you could mobilize black people. And so part of the ops agenda, a part of their modus operandi, is to find out which one of you niggas is a potential leader. And if you are, then we begin a work of progress on your life, which will make people get off of that. Um, it's a part of it. 
as much as in any defense, you're trying to figure out which way this dude is likely to go so I can rip that ball. It, it's the same. Yeah. Farrakhan is a polarizing individual. A lot of people yes. really, I do believe, don't really understand him. I, I think that there are people who get the message, this is what frightens them, is because they know, as you alluded to, they they are, they know his what he's capable of doing, you know, uniting black people and guiding and leading black people in the right in the right way. There's not been a successful one of those yet. So just like if you're a rapper, any know, rapper y'all. can get hit. <clears throat> What's the difference between the Shannon Sharp and Willie yeah, D? We don't have a, y'all. It's something different. We can go it's through 300 years of history and look for I all the black he, he, people that fit the description you just said. I don't want to say Pat was pressed in made. that Shannon Sharp interview, yeah. but he definitely had a lot Which of Which is why I chest. believe that they should stop and trying to make with it. this one. I really do believe that. I appreciate the fact it, you know, that he's a very one, calm, one, cool, one, but the leadership is in yourself. And see if like all of us about the situation and bothered about people's response. Many of us are capable of being a leader. Like, instead of sitting around just waiting on one person say, to be he, that leader, he, you know, how well, about... Well, well, well said, that shit well said but it. in real time... <laughs> well, I guess he got a lot more shit to do. Being know. the leader of yourself gets you nothing. Um, the people demand to be led, regardless. Um, there's not 13 shepherds and all these sheep. Why? Because it's unnecessary. Just one. Just one that has the connection with the sheep, which allows the sheep who has a brain about that small to be able to just focus on eating grass and not worry about falling off a cliff. We have the desire as humans to be led. We want to be led into battle. We want to be led into the football game. We... This is all because this is how we are wired. The cheerleaders and the pomp and circumstance, that goes back to the times of first humanity because we, we do need that. Yeah. Well, you're talking about a myriad of leaders. You're not just talking about a single individual. Right. And I see a lot of people just be sitting back waiting on a messiah. They're waiting on right. that one person. And, but they are too, though. Who's that? The other side is far more diligent about looking for that Messiah than we are because they know where to look. You probably wonder, why do white people pay so much attention to black people if they don't like them? They love appropriate. You would think if you didn't like something, why would you be paying attention to it? I don't pay attention to things I don't like. What's the answer? The answer is the liar knows what lie he told. You see what I'm saying? So even if I made it deceitful and I made you think that the answer is over here, but the answer is really over here, I'm still going to be looking over here. Me, the one that tricked, because I know this is the right answer. Black people have lost their identity, but our oppressors have not lost our Mm. identity. That's just why they chop those noses off of the pharaoh and the sphinx in Egypt in the first place. Is because without this nose, we can tell you this is whoever it is. But with that nigga nose, it can only be niggas. <laughs> why would somebody vandalize a whole face and only vandalize one part? Mm-hmm. Nobody wanted to knock an eye off or take an ear off or... No chins missing. No, just the nose. Because it's a brand. It's a brand. All right, go ahead. You, you, you have a, a, an uncanny way of uh, thinking outside of the box. And you, do, you, you, you are very uh, good at breaking things down like you just did. You understand consequences and repercussions very well. Okay. So... My question to you is, Mm. why are you such a habitual line stepper? Why do you cross that line? I thought you were about to say, why are you such a habitual line ass nigga? What the repercussions (laughs) are? I thought you were about to say that, yo. And and they're not going to be favorable to you. For example, 
Right. I saw where you and uh, Shug got arrested, right? You and Shug got arrested? Is that true? Allegedly. 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 Okay. Like, and what, what were we doing? <laughs> Allegedly, it had something to do with like some type of a target, a camera or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just sure. Oh. I'm just saying this is what I read. I well, I'll tell you now, the story. Willie, don't turn into water me, now. Then does that change how you frame this? Okay. So um, we have a meeting with a hologram company, which is going to go into a licensing deal on some holograms. This is in Beverly Hills. So now there's a rodeo. And behind that is an alleyway where you park your vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. Uh, Suge has brought rodeo. his okay. son with him, who's <laughs> five rodeo. years old. So bougie. And before we go into this meeting, Suge's son runs behind the dumpster and urinates. And a lady films his penis out, <laughs> peeing behind the dumpster. And then says, oh, I thought that was Cat's kid. So, yeah, that's what happened. See, see, man, see, this is what So, understand, we were facing 20 years, Suge and I. 20 years for that. And if it wasn't for the fact that this is Beverly Hills and it's all on camera, they had no problem sending us up the river when we couldn't have possibly done what was being said. That That lady said that she got jumped on by me. So you see what you just did? You just clarified <laughs> a huge, like uh, misconception about you know the events of that that evening or whatever. Yeah, but remember, uh, it went to court. Yeah. Like this isn't just my yeah, word. Really? This. Yeah, they you had to play the video in court, which showed that her altercation wasn't with a man at all. But the trip part about it is that when people print it, when the media, yeah. mainstream media put it out there, they mm -hmm. don't add that piece. They no, just say, nor, nor do they make a retraction. Right. Nor do they say, hey, that thing we told you about that right. guy, turns out it was nothing. Under, understand, I got 15 cases that were dismissed. That, that should be talked about. Why, why, would, why would 15 cases be dismissed? What about the other because folks? Because you were so sure you had what you were <laughs> looking at. Because every city I go to, I'm the nigga with the best car. It's probably smoke coming out that car. It's probably girls gathering around that car. I, I look like the plug. I get it. <laughs> and you've probably already hurt me by the time you, you find like out plug, who I actually am. Right. See... Because of that clarity you just provided, yes, is the reason why I want to know. I think the world want to know what happened between you and Alisa D. I know you said the you world talk couldn't about possibly want to know that know, he's man. not we famous want... enough for the world to want to know that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're because that. my side of the world doesn't want to know that. I don't know. Yeah. Who See, my side of the world. Here's, here's the thing. What happened, man? A lot of times, what liars do first is they set up a narrative and a scenario. No, like Michael Blackson just got on national TV and told people, yeah, I got a beef with Cat Williams and Cat is mad at me about this and because I said this and I didn't even mean it like that. And the whole time, he's never talked to me. That's how he feels. He's heard I'm angry. I've not had a conversation with him. It's the same with your Ali Sadiq. If it wasn't for the information that I know in my intel, I would be a fan of his like everybody else. Who, Who wouldn't be a fan of a young black Hold storyteller on. that's done time and loves his family and is a hometown guy? Like, why would he ever have any enemies in comedy? It's ludicrous. But if you pick the actual king, then make sure that your story is correct. And unfortunately, his story is not correct. No matter what he says, he never met me. Mm -hmm. He made it disrespectful that a security guard that was six foot seven reached over him to pay him. Not, uh, not mentioning the fact that he got paid for not doing anything. 
Well, let's start. Let's start at the beginning of the reliant thing. Uh, I don't know. If I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start, ahead. and then you can do what you want to do. Uh, Fair enough. But I think for for the sake of the audience, knowing we'll just tell them who an Ali idea Sadiq of what is. We're talking yeah, about. tell me because who the fuck is he? Ali Sadiq is a comedian from Houston that's based based oh, in Houston. Damn, a very fine comedian. Very fine comedian. Yeah. Now. Ali Ali said that okay, well, he went to, to Ali, 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 Arena to, and he was on the same show as you. He showed up, and they the the, the uh, security stopped him from entering the building, Got and, he, and they said, Kat, and then somebody told him Cat didn't want you to come in, and then at some point, somebody else came and gave him a check. That's the another security person reached over somebody's shoulder and gave him a check. Mm -hmm. He said that the, the people that were the working security locked arms to prevent him from walking inside of the building. And he thought that, you know, you had a problem with him. And he said, he didn't know why you had a problem with him. And to this day, he don't know why you have a problem with him. That's what he, so what that was like? the, the, yeah. It'd be nice if that was the story. So now, if that's the story, then let me see if I got this correct. A guy I've never met was supposed to be doing a show with me. And I got so angry, even though I hadn't met him, that I had security keep him out of the building. See, that's the problem with lies. They're, they're faulty from their inception, sir. I'm the person in the story that doesn't have a grudge to feel. I don't care why I didn't like Cat Williams. I would get to the bottom of it. This is not one of those stories. First of all, the actual truth of this matter is every I like city that I go to, to I already have the comedians who are opening up for me. Not just this tour, but for the 17 100 city tours previous go, to this. Numbers, I never go to the city and go, hey, do you guys have some comics here? I'd like to add them to my show. I just don't do it. I travel with the comedians um, that are coming to your city. We're one unit and one team when we come. That is to let you understand that no comic was fin to come join us that evening because there isn't space for it. I still have to do an hour at the end of this. There's a limited amount of time. So we could just start there. Second of all, I don't care where you're from, what the venue is, how cool you are with the people that work there. Cat Williams show means Cat Williams show. That means don't not move but the money. There ain't no loud talking and Man, voice raising. And, well, I, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? How? Let oh, me look no, on the advertisements no. and see, do I see your name or face, sir, whoever you may be? Where would you even get the entitlement to be having this question? This is like me insisting that the Lakers put me on as a starter. <laughs> and I won't take no for an answer. It's ridiculous. You don't even play in our league. And that's before I knew who you were. Now that I know who you are, I'm just ashamed because you took something personal that couldn't have been personal. I didn't meet you. That's how it would have gone if I wasn't there because the truth is I wasn't there. All of this happened before I got there. What happened with the check? When the security guy um, gave me When check? I heard, when I asked what the person had said. I said, well, I don't understand. I don't understand why he's so angry. What did he say to you? He said, I'm supposed to be on this show. I said, well, I said, well, well, maybe he was expecting to get some sort of a payment. And, and now he thinks he doesn't get to get paid because we already have a tour. I, I wouldn't want that. Pay him for performing. But did he perform? So he got the check of the performer. This is what he's angry about. Imagine the audacity. <laughs> Remember, your story is that I'm kicking you the fuck out. Get out and lock arms and don't let him in. And paying you? Make it make sense, King. 
<laughs> Either you're smaller than I think or I'm bigger. Either one. Like, you can't keep positioning the narrative because that's all this is. This is so that in a conversation in America, there'll be something where he and I are evenly linked and only people in his hometown are floating that narrative. You, I'm you really know, him. You, you, don't, you don't believe that there's under any circumstances that you know, you and I, Lee, can come to a resolution, just be cool. You know, like, you've just talked to me. You know, yeah. I don't have a bone in this. Yeah. I don't have a bone in this. Sounds like Willie D kind of pushing so for Ali to, phone, you yeah, know, get to. on. I would have gave him the celebrity boxing match he asked for if I thought he was a celebrity. Oh, come on, man. You know I live a celebrity. Come on, Sir, I'm not talking. I, I didn't mean that disparagingly. Yeah. I meant that in ticket sales, my nigga. My ticket nigga. sales. That's what I meant. <laughs> I meant I'm doing 7,000 in your hometown while you go do 300. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm talking statistics. I'm talking about the biggest and baddest thing going. And you, a person trying to get in, why would you be mad? It, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended. Why? Because even if it's celebrity boxing, I need you to sell tickets too. I need you to sell these pay-per-view numbers, my nigga. I know I'm bringing it. It's a whole. It's more people that want to see me get laid out by you. And the fact that an upstanding and righteous gentleman like yourself is in that position with the only thing trying to be righteous in our lane is just more machinations of the devil. There's you should have a much better backstory well, you know when you pick me as an opponent. You know what, man? I'm I'm glad you at least you know you know addressed it. You know because yeah. uh, I, when I, you I, when you talk to him and tell him what the truth is, he won't be able to refute it. I told you earlier. He doesn't know this. How could he know? It's okay for you to think that I'm that way, but there are me, thirty thousand known comedians in America that you could have went to and they would have told you, this is against my character. I am known for confronting my issue head up, be it Satan or his affiliates. I don't care if you six foot six. I don't care if it's five of you. I'm not, I don't care if I'm guaranteed an L. I don't care if you put a gun in my face. I don't care about none of that. I care about doing the right thing as I see it in that moment. Yeah. Man, how did you get on in the first place as far as like with the movie thing? Like I know I'm skipping over the comedy, but how did you get on with the movie thing? Like specifically I wanna know about Money Mike. I wanna know how you go. go. Right. So here's the whole thing. Liars always come up with terrible lies. So Ricky Smiley says, yeah, you know, Cat was supposed to play the Santa Claus and I was supposed to play the pimp. Liars always have ridiculous narratives. Nobody in America can imagine that a real movie studio would cast five foot five, 145 pound Cat Williams as a fucking Santa Claus, number one. <laughs> number two, Ricky Smiley was finna play a pimp. <laughs> really? Ricky Smiley has played a woman more times than Ricky Smiley has played. Oh, Cat. Come on now. What's. <laughs> Arms crossed. The cigarette stands with the <laughs> weed in your hand. Cat. Come on now. You look. <laughs> you look like you're about to tell it, boy. Come on, hey, wait. Let's go. A man. He's played Bernice Jenkins five times. I got it in my contract that I don't work with Ricky Smiley unless he's playing Miss Bernice Jenkins. Get but, out of here, man. That's in your contract for real. I make my contract, yeah, sir. Oh, yeah. When you're the master of your masters, everything else is subservient. That's why we have control. That's why we're hated, because there's something to hate. But anyway... So, Money Mike, this is my first audition 
not just my first movie. It's my first audition. Um, the reason it was so great is because they allowed me to do what I wanted to do and I needed to do things. So I needed to pick the wardrobe for the character. So Money Mike's wardrobe was impeccable because I designed it and they made it so. I picked out the car, um, the color. Here you go. Here you go. All right. So here's the whole thing. Liars always come up with terrible lies. So Ricky Smiley says, yeah, you know, Cat was supposed to play the Santa Claus and I was supposed to play the pimp. Liars always have ridiculous narratives. Nobody in America can imagine that a real movie studio would cast five foot five, 145 pound Cat Williams as a fucking Santa Claus, number one. <laughs> number two, Ricky Smiley was finna play a pimp. <laughs> really? Ricky Smiley has played a woman more times than Ricky Smiley has played. Oh, uh, Cat. Come on now. What's. <laughs> Arms crossed. The cigarette stands with the <laughs> weed in your hand. Cat, come on now. You look. <laughs> you look like you're about to tell it, boy. Come on, hey, wait. Let's go. A man. He's played Bernice Jenkins five times. I got it in my contract that I don't work with Ricky Smiley unless he's playing Miss Bernice Jenkins. Get but, out of here, man. That's he, in your contract for real? I make my contract, yeah, sir. Oh, yeah. When you're the master of your masters, everything else is subservient. That's why we have control. That's why we're hated, because there's something to hate. But anyway... So, Money Mike, this is my first audition, not just my first movie. It's my first audition. Um, the reason it was so great is because they allowed me to do what I wanted to do, and I needed to do things. So I needed to pick the wardrobe for the character. So Money Mike's wardrobe was impeccable because I designed it, and they made it so. I picked out the car, um, the color of the car. Uh, they had a guy playing a pimp. I need this to be an actual pimp. We need Bishop Magic Don Juan. Uh, <laughs> everything I had to do, um, me and KD Albert, who played Donna, and Terry Crews, it was all of our first project. And my job was to make sure that we came off as if we were seasoned actors. And so I put everything I had into that movie to the point where in the script Money Mike is raped in the bathroom. Cat Williams changed that. Well it's a good thing that she did Why? Cat. Why? Because it's no way. What do you mean Cat? <laughs> There's no way. What are you saying? I'm saying in a place that small I'm not rapable. <laughs> I don't care what has to happen. That's what will happen. And so that's how it changed and became a great uh, movie. And just the thought process that maybe Ricky Smiley was going to do that it is laughable. But yeah, that was, that was going to be my only movie. So I had to do everything that I could do to make sure that it went the way I needed it to. And I, I've done that in every uh, one of the 60 movie roles that I've done in the 50 network television roles. Man, I'm glad you stood on that, man, because it's a lot of people who would not have. They People get blinded by that bread, man, or that opportunity. And right. for you to stand on that, that says a lot, because I know Terry Crews would have probably enjoyed it. You know, in real life. Oh, damn. Oh, bless his heart. Oh, you guys look like heart. his little brother, son. Oh. Willie, come on, Willie. <laughs> now... <laughs> How did you, how did you get this, um, this knack for comedy in the first place? Like you, I mean, you, you, you had a, you know, a, a pretty uh, tumultuous childhood. Like, how do you pivot from that and get into comedy? Hey, I didn't find it to be tumultuous. Um, once, so at the time, yeah. So at the time, you you was living it. You like yeah, you see it yeah. Like this that. is not tumultuous. Okay. But but your question was, how did I? How did you find comedy? A lot of times, you have the true appreciation for something when you're not trying to do it. 
you just like it. So that's the relationship that I had with music, and it was the relationship that I had with comedy. So musically, I could listen to Pearl Jam <laughs> and the Ghetto Boys. Like, I could yes, yes, y'all. We D, y'all. Nine Inch Nails, and I could listen to Prince. And I could, I could do that. And comedically, I found that I could do that too. It didn't matter what the comedy person looked like um, or how they were built or where they were from. If they were funny, I was going to be able to tell. So I understood that Don Knotts was out there working his ass off um, as Barney Fife. I understood he wasn't doing the same job as the rest of them. I, 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 I understood that laughter is an emotion. And anytime mm -hmm. you can tap an emotion, that's very powerful, regardless of what emotion you're tapping. When you're tapping these emotions, before you deliver the joke, are you cognizant of what it's going to take to, like, deliver that joke? Like, are you already knowing that I know for a fact I don't have to practice this. They're going to be with this right here. When I say this, oh, I'm going to get them. Um, I think you just said he discovered As a comedian, I have the best fan base in the world like documented um, you do um the the slight amount of advertisement that they allowed me to do and the fact that in a place as glorious as houston um they pack uh the arena to the rafters um uh, is based upon the fact that i in 1995 started a conversation with a fan base which was maybe five people and through this entire time i've kept up the same conversation with the same people as they grow and um I'm letting you see me win. I'm letting you see me lose. I'm never allowing the product to be affected by what's going on because this is the greatest relationship here. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, consequently, bam, they know some things when I come to town. They know I'm finna bring the baddest comedians with me. That's who's gonna be opening up. They know this all over the country. And then they know that whatever it is Cat's gonna talk about for an hour, they know he did not talk about this the last time he was here. They know Man, that. Man, how in the hell do comedians get away with that anyway? Because I'm not going to see the same comedian tell the same jokes a you know, hundred times in a row. You'll, like, let, a ra you'll, let, a rap you'll let a rapper rap the same songs, though. And you'll let a singer sing the same songs, the classics, and you'll, you'll allow that. And so, yeah, but, but funny is supposed to be spontaneous. So that's the it, difference. Well, well, understand that comedy has its roots long before social media. So before social media, you might have heard that this comedian is funny, right? And somebody might have told you what he said. But it didn't sound that funny to you. They just told you what he said. But when you see him in person, oh, he's hilarious. And so comedy always had a cycle where you showed the whole circuit your body of work. It's just comedians had gotten so lazy that they were doing one great set that they had on Comic View or Def Jam, and they were touring that for 15 years without changing it. And so uh, we like made it fired. a part of our effort <laughs> to push <laughs> doing comedy the 15 fact years. that you should be Drop a comment writing below, y'all. Don't forget, be sure to hit that subscribe and that like button. Um, yeah, notification bell right like, yeah. into it by just I'm going to keep putting out these specials and this new material. How, how long are you going to continue to tell these jokes? Because in a minute the audience is going to be like, "No, they got to say something new." And eventually the audience did do that. And but, so, well some some audiences show up and they want you to say the old joke. 
They demand I, that you tell the old joke. I, I don't have not one of those people in my no. fan base because they know better. They know that I would never let you pay me so you can hear some shit I already said. I respect go. you too much for that. There what you, you go. gonna get That's from me? I damn sure ain't paying for some shit you not already told me. You right. Right now you have twelve comedy specials. Okay. Is there a magic number in mind, or you just want to just keep keep running to make sure you got the all time number and and that's secure for? Are you already at the I'm, top? I'm, you got the, I'm I'm you got more. I'm in anybody? no way. I'm in no way counting numbers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you would, you know you'd be in the lead. I'm saying if I'm, if twelve if twelve is the most, if twelve was the most, there couldn't there's not a number because I'm not I'm not putting a number to it. Um, but I've been special that many times <laughs> for an hour. 17 tours, 100 cities. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. That is a, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's enough work for a few lifetimes. Most comedians won't even get a hundred cities. Well, most comedians ain't going to, ain't going to do that one time. You're like, and how do you continue to come up with this new material? Because you do new material every single time you show up. That's crazy. It's a new show every single time I show up. Man, that is crazy. I, I'm a, you know, I'm a comedy connoisseur. I follow comedy. That, most of the most of the comics that are the top so dogs right now. So this interview you know, definitely ain't gonna get like most in, views in, in some of our heroes but, in comedy. You know, in comedy, you know I was still... there when they were like working on their first jokes. Yeah. I was watching them and supporting them way back then. But that is a tough feat to be able to do something like that. Mm. You know, and I, I, I think that, that the reason why... Not in 24 years. Yeah. Huh. I, I, I think the reason why people like you is so much they 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 re what you do is you resonate with them so much is like what you just said you show them the good and the bad side of you but also you you're talented you you have mm -hmm. a you have a you're very talented but at the same time you do show the good and the bad and you know it's something appealing about being transparent to an extent oh uh, not not just to an extent to to the utmost the the as soon as you as a person decide that you're not going to lie anymore and that whatever problem that you have you're going to deal with that problem right then where it presents itself It'll show you a whole new side of you. It's 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 very important. It's very important um, when you lie and allow lies. For some people, it's just oh, I'm just a little delusional. No, that's it's dangerous for you to do that to yourself. It's it's very unnecessary for you to. You was on uh, this radio station <laughs> in, in Atlanta, and this uh, host. <laughs> made a joke about you and you ate up like killed a man like for like I don't know how long that was not. man I was like time out time out you know call the police something you know stop this slaughter man you was like you really I mean you really did a bad and you didn't I don't think hold you on. cursed one hold, time hold. I was just gonna say uh, yeah. I was gonna say be very careful yeah. when you say how badly I did no, her no, no, because you, I never called her out I of know, her but name that, but that's what I'm saying I, I no, that, I was very composed. That's my point. But let me explain. You, you, let me give you the exclusive. Few, no, no, let me make the point. Okay. You, you're one of the few, like, only you and Bruce Bruce I've ever seen do that before. <laughs> like, destroy <laughs> uh, a heckler or someone that was challenging you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Destroy them, like, I mean, for, like, several minutes. I mean, Bruce Bruce killed this chick for about, I don't know, man, about 25, 30 minutes one night in Houston, mm -hmm. and i never seen anybody else do that but you. Like, 25, I mean, just back-to-back, -back, gut busting, like, same person, right, right. no cuss words. Yeah. i had never seen that before, so how were you able to maintain your composure <laughs> for that long? 
Well, <laughs> a very interesting thing happens when you try to trap yeah, something man, that's bigger than your trap. So imagine you set out a trap for a turtle and a rhinoceros steps into it. It's finna be a whole different situation. Sorry, y'all. I'm sleeping. So this lady behind the scenes is begging you to come into this interview that I've not scheduled, that I don't want to do, that I'm not dressed for, that nobody's called me about. She just wants it to the point where she says, Kat, come on, I just, you just want to end me for the city. I just want to give you your flowers. Well, I won't talk about kids. I won't talk about no jail. I won't talk about. This is the conversation she has mm -hmm. with me and then goes in that room and doesn't mention the Emmy and immediately begins to, um, Cause this is I a remember comedian. that. I'm gonna have to go back and review you, that. I'm gonna do a reaction me. video to that one as well. Um, Atlanta see, is um, a but I think how it started LGBT was something with Tiffany Haddish, really. Plus positive city, and the fact that you having a heavy gay fan base would try to degrade me, a heterosexual, by making it seem like I'm gay. Gay people don't feel that way about me. Why would you? So it was it was a terrible thing that she found I gotta herself go watch in. Interview again. I don't and think, I gotta, comedically, I don't bits and like that, but I started. You're un, you're outmatched. I, I my my defense is impenetrable. My offense uh, will have the precise amount of viciousness that's necessary. If that means no cussing, that's fine. I, I, I don't want to talk to you and hurt heavy set women's feelings or hey, dark skinned women's for feelings girls, okay? or women who wear wigs feelings. I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm bantering with you because you keep acting like you're qualified to do that. Yeah. So, you know, it was a setup. I'm which, always going to be pre prevail if I'm being set up. You think Buddy was in on it, her, her co-host? You think he was in on that? Nah, he, he didn't. didn't no, 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 because here's, here's the whole thing. He kept trying to get her to pull the plug on this, and she kept not. So... um she she didn't understand even after we cut. She didn't understand what had happened. She she still thought that she had been victorious, and yeah. And then she tried to play the victim. No, she played the victim. Her husband was willing to kill one of the greatest comedians to. Oh uh, uh, yeah, something afterwards she. Uh, yeah, I'm saying she got her husband. And remember, that all of this has to thing. happen. I have to allow it to happen. I have to also. Uh, yeah, he took all running. I seen that video. Preserve my life. And then after I do all of that, then I have to not press charges on you to these police as if a crime has not been committed upon me. A pimp named Slickback. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank you for saying the whole thing. Look, man. <laughs> like a tribe called. Yeah, you got to say the whole thing. You got to say the whole thing. That is correct. A pimp. Name Slickback. Yes. Man, that is one of the most iconic roles in television history. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Money, Mike. Uh, um, dumb people love dumb people, and geniuses try to find people that are on their mental platitude. So platitude. Aaron Magruder is one of the... Yeah finest black writers that Absolutely. we've had yes. um, and the fact that he started his journey in the real trenches writing for newspapers and getting syndicated across the country before he ever came to um, the next platform is what made him so formidable so um, it was a joy to be able to uh, work with him just like you know when I do work with Donald Glover 
you know, if we get the Emmy, like it's because you're dealing with compatible wavelengths. Like mm -hmm. Donald Glover told me, Cat, here's a script. You know, if you do, you know, if you do this role right, you'll win an Emmy for it. I said, that's the only way I know to do it is right. And won the Emmy. Well, I know that's I mean, a lot Richard, of I've never seen uh, that show with Donald Glover in it, but David him David talking like about the, it makes me want to go watch it. The biggest thing that you can't stand about this industry. This is what we've been waiting for. Nothing. I like it. Shit, I don't know who you think you're talking to. I like <laughs> it. Now you, now you, <laughs> now let's. I love my op as myself. Yeah. I think it's great. On our side of things, it's flourishing. It's never been better. Um, all the people on our side are seeing that prayers do work and that you really um, have control of your mind more than you think you do. And if you could somehow possibly stop thinking the way you do and think another way, it might help you. And you'll know right away if it does. That's the benefit is each one of these days you're getting could really be the one. What's one of the wildest things that has happened to you or, or you've seen happen in your time in this entertainment space? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Vlad. Um, I, <laughs> I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I, I collect the footage, but... I haven't seen anything. Um, one of them Stanley Cups. You were doing so good, man. I mean, you was just doing so good, and then all of a sudden, you just decided. <laughs> well, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What What you asked was, you said, "Hey, Wolf, <laughs> what do you hate about the sheep? <laughs> Nothing." <laughs> Nothing. I feel good. I feel like we in a good position. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> Let's go, Coach Prime. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about we Coach coming. Prime? What's up with Coach Prime? You, 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 have you been out there yet, Colorado? No, but I've, I've supported from afar. Yeah. I, I, I'm saying, <clears throat> anytime a a great individual, regardless of what he does, finds something that he can be great in, like that's gonna work. Like, mm -hmm. he, he is a motivating factor and an asset to it. He always has been since the Jerry Curl days. Um, those are the leaders of men that we discussed up. earlier. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I can't uh, get that An though. eternal optimist. I don't know why I tried. Uh, someone that's clever and about books and hard work and discipline. Uh, you know, as a black person, we should be so lucky as to have you know, a black coach like that. And as a non-black person, what a great job. Man, you know, you just describe yourself, except the coach part. And then I take that back. You and, are a coach and, in your own and, life. And you as yeah. well. That's the whole thing. Like, these compliments are all shared by all of us who receive them. Like, I, that's what it's got to be. If you any reflection of me, then that's what it is. That's why in the good book it say, made in God's image. Yeah. It don't mean you're always going to do that, but it means there's the possibility that you could mirror that. Yeah. Do you have adopted children? Um, <laughs> either, either, I, I'm an empty excellent. nester. I have no children at this point. I <laughs> glory and hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> no, everybody's grown. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I got grandbabies. You got grandbabies. Mm. Okay. Yeah. How many? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Nice. All girls. Oh yeah. See? Oh, yeah. That's how you know he's been doing something right? What 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 are the ages? <laughs> of what? The girls. The grandbabies? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I have a six, two fours. 
It's like, you know you old when you can't think of the age no more. 11 months and two. That's five. Yeah. <laughs> I realized it as you said it. I didn't know how to change the story. Okay, so I got five grandkids. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did they call you? I got five daughters. Um, I can't get anybody to call me anything that I asked for. Um, they've already made a decision, and that's what they call me. There's nothing I can do about it, and I'm not going to say what it is. It um, sounds like Stop Stop or something. I don't know. All right. But man, we appreciate you coming on the show, man. I, I really appreciate you having that. me. You're a, you, you're yeah. an icon and a legend yourself, and just the fact that you would um, spend Boy, time the with me and is magnificent. <laughs> Nobody asks work worst questions. You're the you have the worst questions in all of interviewing, <laughs> and you can count on it. Nobody's going to mimic your questions. <laughs> so yeah, it's an honor. Thank you. I appreciate you, man, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Cat <laughs> Williams. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. No more talk. All right, y'all. So that's that. We're going to go ahead and get up out of that one now. Let's see. All right, y'all. Woo! So that was a lot. Let's see here. Get that out there. Let's get this back out here, y'all. All right. Uh oh. Oh well. All right, y'all. So that was that uh, his interview he just did. If you guys seen with Willie D live, so it wasn't as what I expected it to be. I thought it would be a little bit more liver uh, cat going in, uh, but that's my fault for uh, expecting something else with, with another interview. You know that was with Shannon. This is with Willie D. As you guys seen, he was a little bit more, you know, post and composed and, and talked about other things. He did cap on, you know, uh, <laughs> back on Ricky. Um, I wanted him to talk more about Steve and his beef with Steve and, and, and said and, and what they're going to do move forward. And, and those responding to what he said about Shannon. I mean, not, not about Shannon, but on the Shannon Sharp Club Shay Shay podcast. And so I don't know, you guys, what, what are y'all thoughts on it? Um, did y'all like it or, or what? I mean, I didn't hate it. I'm just saying it was not as entertaining as the Shannon Sharp interview. But he did drop a lot of gems. Uh, you learned a lot more about him, and as well as just being an overall, you know, good person in life and, and seeing how what you see and what you get. That's how I feel about it. How he's explaining when you know you have a purpose in life and, and what you were meant to do in life. You don't let nothing deter from you. And I agree with what he was stating when it came to with reading and going to the library. You know, knowledge is power. That's what I used to do as a kid. That was my favorite place. It still is to this day to go to the library and read books. As a matter of fact, I'm refreshing up on uh, learning. Well, not learning, but just re-upping on my uh, investments for the dummies. Stock investing. So, uh, knowledge is power, y'all, with that. And so... I don't know. Drop y'all comments below. Let me know y'all thoughts on the interview and what y'all thought about it. I don't know. It just, uh, if I had to say, it was entertaining, just not as entertaining as I thought it would be. And so, um, with that, uh, I don't know. I, I want to go look at that interview again he did with uh, Wanda Smith and see how it started exactly. And who, I don't, I don't want to say who's right and who's wrong. Everybody knew that the old lady, not the old lady, if you want to mean, well, fuck it, she is a bitch, but, um, you know, she, she called it on herself, but still in such, I want to go take a look at it and see, and I, as well as try to see, like, where is she now? I heard she got fired from the job, but this was years ago, like, I think in 2019, and so where is Wanda Smith now? That's a good question. I want to find out. So, with that, be on the lookout for my reaction video from that, um, Wanda Saika and Cat Williams. But with that being said, you guys, if y'all enjoyed my reaction video with the Willie D and Cat Williams interview, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I do appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Keep it coming, you guys, and don't stop. Uh, what else we got going on? Moving right along uh, with Difference World. What else we got? We got a lot more coming up. We're going to finish out uh, the month of January, try to finish it on a good note. Uh, we had a really bad you know, winter storm for MLK Day out here 
in uh, Houston and so the parade got canceled and so I didn't get a chance to go and do uh, some content for you guys with the MLK Day Parade. So uh, we'll see what's coming up for next week. Uh, February next month, Black History Month. You guys know it's a big month for me, especially with promoting my book, What If a Controversial Sh a Paradigm Shift, again, which is available on my website. So again, don't forget, go there to my website and purchase it. And again, this book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, you guys, be advised that this is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. Just get you a little fire blanket. That's all you need. You'll be okay. You'll survive. Uh, the point of it all is to have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug. People turn a blind eye to. And, and you know overall it just needs to be had you know and so with that it's my hope that over time that talking about these issues can we can come up with ways where we can create systemic change instead of dwelling on systemic racism and so again go to my website differencewell.net and get your copy of my book what if a controversial paradigm shift now i know i do things a little backwards here um I'm just uh, again like I said I'm just uh, trying out some things different I, I don't want to be monolithic or you know doing one robotic thing as another so with that uh, switching it up with uh, you guys uh, as well as again so for those that's looking for the motivation speakers looking to do collaborations what else uh, just in general trying to get at your girl you guys can uh, get at me well my website differenceworld.net shoot me a DM you can message me or whatever the case may be I ain't hard to find um, as well as what else we got going on in Difference Quill. What's tomorrow, y'all? I really don't. It's, it's the weekend, and so I got a lot going on. So I just be doing some content, um, getting my TikTok uh, shop page ready for you. Uh, again, we got next month Black like History Month. So again, that's why you guys got to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button. So when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girl. Yeah. Also, you guys, let's go ahead and do our mental health check. For those out there, including myself, that may be going through any type of mental anguish, including, you know, depression, having suicidal thoughts, anxiety attacks, even dealing with bullying or drug relapse. Please know that it's okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. Be it talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, a, a pastor, a picking up a hobby, mending broken bridges, cutting people off, even getting on medication, if that's the case. Do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end. If you need or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S. and that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys can check out incounseling.com. And again, you guys, even though I'm giving you these mental health resources, please remember that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research to find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters. Nobody else. And so with that being said, I want you guys to remember that whatever trial and tribulation that you may be going through at this time in your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option. It's not worth it. So therefore, don't do it. All right. And so moving on with the mental health check, bringing it back to some more positive advice for you guys. I hope again you guys enjoyed looking at my reaction videos. I'm actually starting to do some uh, product review videos as well. And so be on the lookout for that, you guys. I'll be dropping those uh, shortly. So again, that's why you has got to hit the not notification bell and that subscribe button. So when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn, yeah? And so getting on out of here, you guys, we're going to... Uh, Look this thing on out just reminding you guys to remember whatever it is in life that you are feeling you're destined for you have to manifest plan and prepare for it and it will surely come to you guys if it's well come and learn peace what if what if in 1619 africans started dealing in slaves trading the tables were turned around what if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? 
What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.